thank you for being here. We recognize this as the second Sunday of Easter. Easter is much more than a day, and you recognize that and are here for part of the Easter season. You also are here, and I consider it a treat for you all to have an opportunity to hear the scripture read aloud this morning. We are in John's Gospel, which I believe tells the story of Easter in the way that has all the details and really draws us in as people of God. Last Sunday at the sunrise service at Mora Mountain, we read the first 20 verses of, of, the, of the resurrection story as it's told by John, and today I pick up with verse 19. Hear now God's word. When it was evening on that day, that is, the day of resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Amen. I don't think there could be a purer telling of a story of unfolding faith than John's gospel account of the resurrection. You will remember in the early verses that I did not read today that what's happened is that Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb, she finds the tomb empty, she goes back and she tells Simon Peter and another disciple, and they race each other back to the tomb and see that what Mary has said is true. But the fact of an empty tomb doesn't really prove anything to Mary or to the other disciples. And so Mary is sweeping outside of the tomb saying, where have they put my friend Jesus? What has happened to my friend Jesus? And she meets a man who she assumes to be the gardener and ask the question, what have you done with Jesus? And you will remember that Jesus simply says to her, Mary. He calls calls her by her name, and she recognizes 
that this is Jesus. And so she says, I have seen the Lord. And she goes and tells others that she has seen the Lord. So it is a great day for the disciples who have been wondering what would happen, wondering what their fate would be, what was going to happen. Jesus continued to tell them throughout the gospel that he was going to be killed. So the worst thing that could happen has happened. And it was not the final thing. Because the next thing that happened is that Jesus was raised from the dead and he was walking among his disciples. And so about 12 hours after that is where we entered the gospel story this morning. And we are told that the disciples are locked in the house because they're afraid. They're locked in the house because they're afraid. They are afraid of what might happen to them. They are afraid of what they don't know. They are afraid of what they've heard and of what they've seen and of so many other things. And so suddenly, not to be outdone by a locked door, Jesus stands there and says, Peace, peace be with you. That's about the length of sermon we would all like to hear from week to week, I expect. And it's a sermon that Jesus has preached before. You will remember many times when he told not only the people, but the elements, the natural elements, peace, be still. And so in that encounter with the disciples, Jesus shows them his hands and his side, and he's there among them. And so they're beginning to understand more and more. They've seen the empty tomb. They've seen the risen Christ. They've seen the risen Christ just pop in their house where they are. They've seen the nail prints. And it seems like more and more they are understanding who this Jesus is and what his life might mean for their lives. Peace be with you. As we understand this Greek word and the Hebrew word shalom that preceded this word, peace is much more than the absence of conflict. This peace is about wholeness. It is about well-being. It is about healing. It is about understanding and restored relationship. Peace be with you. Every one of those disciples was aching for that kind of peace, for that kind of relationship that would restore them to understanding of who God was and who God was for them. And so their faith unfolds just a little more. We're not told where Thomas is when this happens, but we're told that now a week later, so there really are two stories here, there's the evening of the resurrection, and then there's a week later We're told that Thomas, known as the twin, shows up. He's missed a lot. We don't know why he missed it, but he wasn't there the first time that Jesus appeared to the disciples. This time, they're in a house with the door closed, but not locked. Jesus doesn't knock on the door that time either. He just appears in their midst and says, peace with you. I don't think it's too surprising that Thomas wanted to know a little bit more. Thomas, neither Thomas nor Jesus make much of his doubt, but boy, the Christian tradition has, 
Most of us would know Thomas as Doubting Thomas, wouldn't we? That's the adjective that often appears before his name. But Jesus is happy to explain, to show, to be there for Thomas as well. He's happy to let Thomas entertain any doubts he may have, to be there for him and to offer him the same peace, wholeness, and healing and well-being and restoration of relationship that he has offered to the other disciples the week before. If we are honest, if we are brutally honest with ourselves, we might recognize that we are the twin of Thomas. We are his twin. For don't we all entertain some doubts? We tamp them down as much as we can. We don't usually speak them to others because we don't want them to call us doubting Elizabeth or doubting Jim or doubting John. But they're there. Things we can't make sense of. Some of them are theological. Yeah, but how did this happen? How did God do this? Some of our doubts have to do with who we are. Why me? Why didn't I? Why should I? Why can't I? Some of our doubts have to do with our relationships. Should I, can I, will I, why not? Some of our doubts have to do with how we live our lives. Is this the thing God is calling me to do? Is this what Scripture really means for me? Doubts. Jesus does not condemn the doubts that Thomas expresses. Neither does Jesus condemn the doubts that live within us. Is there a place for me? Is God's grace sufficient for me? How will I ever get out of this difficult circumstance? But what about healing? Every day I pray for healing for my friend or my spouse or my sibling. What's going on there? Unfolding faith. I think there are many things we learn from John's gospel today. Not least of those is that wherever we are, whether we are in a closed room, whether we are in a locked space, huddled with our friends. Whether our lives seem to be in disarray, Jesus comes. Jesus does not leave us alone. Jesus does not leave us without comfort. Wherever we are, doubt and faith can live hand in hand. And that is because of God's love poured out for us through the life of Jesus Christ. The resurrection is not a one-day story. It is not a story even for one season. The story of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is for our lives. 
in all times and in all places, and especially in the rock-hard places of our lives. The resurrection of Jesus Christ speaks of hope. It speaks of meaning. It speaks of life and of love that will never, ever leave us alone. Faith unfolding bit by bit by bit for all the people of God in this time and forevermore. Peace. Peace be with you, wholeness, well-being, healing, restoration, transformation, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.